So let's set that IP address. Go to change adapter settings, properties, go into my TCP IP and we'll go in here. So 10.0.0.21 and there I go again trying to use the numlock 10.0.0.211 and my DNS is 10.0.0.3 which is the IP address of my small business server. I say OK to that. Close that. And we're good to go. I'm just going to go and do the same thing here. I'm going to do a ping make sure I can ping the machine so I've got my network connectivity so that's good and so I'm now going to go in here and I'm going to change the name of this machine so this will be my OEC terminal services server and I'll say OK to that telling me I need to restart same as before so I'll restart that's all good and now I'll do my control alt delete again to log on And same process, I'm going to go in here and choose change and get this to join our OEC computers domain. I'll say OK. Again, it's prompting me for my username and password. I'll say OK. That'll now join the domain. I'll get my message saying that it has joined the domain and then um, we're all good to go. Next step is I'm going to go onto my SQL Server machine and I'm going to install SQL Server. So there's my welcome to OEC computers message it's telling me I've got to restart so I'll restart that now and I'll close down that connection and that'll just sit there uh, and that'll run quite happily in the background. So you can see I've got my um, SQL server and my terminal server. The terminal server is just restarting at the moment. So now I can go back and I can connect to my terminal, my SQL server and I'll control alt delete to log on. I now want to choose to log on to the domain. So I need to choose switch user click on other user you can see the domain now is automatically set there so I'm going to log on again as myself give that a couple of seconds and we're now logged on to this virtual server which is now a member of the OEC computers domain so we're good to go uh, from an infrastructure perspective here so what am I going to do uh, I want to now install SQL Server. So how do I do that? Well, I go up here and I can get rid of this, um, this uh, server manager. And I can go up here and I go into File and Settings. This will then bring up my um, virtual machine setting. Now, one of the things that I can do uh, one of the few things that I can do when the virtual machine is running I'm able to specify a new image file for the uh, DVD drive to use as a virtual DVD so this is where I'm going to now browse out and I'm going to choose my SQL Server ISO file same as I chose an ISO file when I was booting up and building the virtual machines I can change the ISO files while the virtual machine is running I'll choose that I'll say apply 
and OK. And what you'll uh, notice is that it actually inside the virtual server, it looks at it and says, ah, OK, um, a new DVD has been inserted. So the same thing will occur as if you had inserted a physical DVD into a physical server. So I'm going to go and run setup. SQL Server 2008 R2, which SAP Business One is uh, compatible with. So it requires the Microsoft.NET framework. And so I'm going to click on OK, and those um, components are going to be installed for me um, from the CD. Okay, so what am I going to do? I'm going to go here into installation. So I'm going to put in a new installation. So I'll let that run. And what you'll find, um, all things being equal, again, as long as your uh, virtual server um, host is in line with the specifications that I've provided, you'll find um, that it will be very, very fast. So that's all good. My um, setup uh, has checked that it meets the requirements. So I can say OK to that. And now it's going in and it's kicking off the installation proper. All right, so I've got a couple of choices. Um, it's going to uh, ask me if I want to install a free evaluation edition, SQL Express, Express with Advanced Services, or do I want to enter a, pro enter a product key? So I'm going to enter a product key. I'm not going to record this part because you'll need to provide your own product key. So I'm just going to pause for a second while I pop my product key in. Okay, so now I've done uh, that and I've put in my uh, key. I'm going to accept the license terms and I'll say next. I'll choose install and let the process continue. It's setting up the support files that SQL Server needs. So that's now done and we're ready to move on to the next stage in the, um, in the SQL installation. So I'll choose next. And I want to do a SQL Server feature installation. So I want to have the choice of spe specifying which features I do and don't want installed. So I'll say next. So uh, I want the database engine services. I want SQL Server replication. Actually, no, I don't. I'm going to switch that off. I want full text search, analysis and reporting services. Um, in my shared features, I pretty much want everything uh, except I don't need my um, any of the SDKs. And I don't really need the sync framework, but I'm going to install it anyway because you never know if uh, I might need that for a demo uh, in some way, shape or form. And then I'll say next. And that's checked uh, a couple of things, so that's all good to go. So I'm going to use my default instance, which is going to be called MSSQL Server. And then I'll say next. It's just in case I'm installing an extra instance or I want to give this a particular named instance or whatever the case may be, it gives you that flexibility. That's the amount of space it's going to take up. I've got plenty of space available, so I'll say next. And now what we're going to get prompted for is all of the accounts that I want to use. So I'm going to browse out and I'm going to select my account here. Now, um, because this is a demo environment, I'm not overly worried about hardening the system and following all the normal um, security processes because normally you would not use your administrator account to run your SQL Server accounts. You would set up a dedicated account and run um, the SQL Server services in that context. But I'm not too worried about that uh, because this is a demo environment. So I'll say OK. That's now set. I do want my SQL Server browser to start up automatically. So I'll then say next. OK, invalid credentials. Let me just make sure I've done that correctly.
check my name. So that's good. And then I'll put in my password. And I'll say OK to that. And then I'll say next. That's better. I think I must have mistyped my password. So we're going to use mixed mode authentication. I'm going to create an SA password and again I'm going to be writing all these passwords down so I know exactly um, how my demo environment is set up. Make sure that's all correct. Alright, I'm going to add the uh, current user as a SQL administrator and then I'm going to say next. I'm going to add myself, the current user, as an administrator for analysis services and I'll say next. And now for my reporting services, I'm going to install it, but I don't want to configure the report server at this stage. So I'll say next and next one more time and everything's OK. There's no failures and no warnings. So I can go and say next. There's my checklist. That's all good. I'll say install and now I'm going to let the installation run. I'm going to pause the recording because I'm sure you don't want to sit here and watch this go through and then we'll come back when we're finished. So you can see that's a fairly low maintenance process involved in um, doing the installation. So the installation is completed successfully. So I'll say close. And that's it. Now if I want to double check that that, is, um, that it has actually gone through, I can click on start, I'm going to all programs, I'll go into SQL Server, I'm going to go into my management studio. It's going to take a couple of seconds to run just for the very first time, so it's doing the configuration. And then I'm just going to connect to the SQL Server itself, make sure everything's um, as I expect it to be. All right, so my server name, if I drop down here, I can browse. And I put in my server name, OEC SQL server. And you can see I've got a connection. There's all my system databases, my SQL Server agent is sitting there running and ready to go. So that's my SQL Server installation done. The next step that we're going to cover in our next video is the installation and the configuration of the terminal server.